Living History, World War II Stories is told by those who were there. The fall of France in June 1940 had enabled the Germans to take over the French Atlantic ports. They quickly deployed their U-boats to these and constructed special bomb-proof shelters, or pens, to house them. On the 17th of August 1940, Hitler declared a total blockade of Britain and warned that neutral merchant ships would be sunk without warning. This gave the U-boats in their new French bases their cue, and they began to ravage the Atlantic with a new intensity. As summer wore into autumn, shipping losses began to mount. Even before the United States entered the war, the bottom of the Atlantic is a formidable cemetery of Allied ships. But there are no tombstones in the sea. Only the drifting remnants of disaster. On the Jeremiah Van Rensselaer, I was a cadet midshipman, and the first mate put me in charge of uh, seeing that all the equipment in the lifeboats was properly lashed down. So that was a great blessing. I knew where all the things were in the lifeboats, and that's what saved my life, our lives later. There were well over 60 ships in this convoy. And we were just headed for the United Kingdom. The Dorchester was a troop ship and uh, joined our convoy loaded with soldiers. Uh, we left New York around uh, the, in the middle of January and about 10 days out at sea we were about halfway across the Atlantic and uh, it was at night in the first hours of February 1st that our ship got struck by a couple of torpedoes and uh, sunk. Uh, the Dorchester continued on, but then a, f a day or so later, and it was sunk also by a German submarine. And that was a catastrophic event because just about all the men were lost. The uh, four chaplains were gained their uh, lasting recognition through the fact that they gave up their life jackets to men who didn't have them. Well, I was uh, getting ready to go to sleep. It sure sounded like a tremendous thunder drum, and it just echoed through the ship, and uh, it hit way up in the bow. He fired a second one. He launched a second one, which also hit in the same area almost. So some of them got into the lifeboats on the lee side of the ship. And then I'll never forget, by the time I got out on deck, here there were two lifeboats left on the windward side of the ship. And I supervised them and getting them, the boats down. And the ship rolled so much that uh, the seas were so high at the time and then on the, on the roll this way to be 40 feet down to the water. And the rest of us went down the man ropes. So we got about 26 or so men in that lifeboat. I, then I saw another ship in the, on the horizon in the dark. There was a moonless night. And uh, so that's when I, my knowledge of where things were in the lifeboat came in. And I went for that flare pistol and I fired a flare pistol which burst right over our heads in a flare. It was enough to let that little rescue ship know where we were, and they came over and we were picked us up.